the, uh, uh, the print media uh, during the period of the election campaign. Uh, there were a number of volunteers who helped me, and uh, yeah, and these are the people who helped with the uh, with the, the project: Anthony, Dana, uh, Zuyong, Yining, Ling, uh, Lisa, Zarina, Kampong, my wife, uh, Adrian, and Royce. Okay, uh, the usual disclaimer: this is entirely done in my personal capacity. The data was collected by these people, but I'm for the analysis. Although I may have helped out with the uh, SDP um, and to a much lesser extent with the RP, I do not belong to any political party or I've been thrown out of Marua. So uh, Marua's primary reason for existence is, uh, uh, is in human rights. And again, uh, you all know this is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, human rights, as you all know as well, was critical to our history and some of our founding fathers in the early years were great advocates of uh, human rights. Uh, more recently, Singapore has done its presentation on human rights at the United Nations and uh, apparently uh, the UN panel has praised us for our uh, human rights record. <laughs> Marua has been at the forefront of, uh, of the human rights uh, process. And uh, to go back to the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 21 of the Universal Declaration states that everyone has the right to take part in the government of his, his or her country uh, through freely chosen representatives. The will of the people should be chosen by periodic and genuine elections which shall be through universal suffrage and through a secret vote or equivalent free voting procedures. So this project was to measure the relative uh, impartiality of the print media during the GD campaign. Uh, there were three uh, things that we measured. Quantitative coverage of the different political parties, qualitative coverage in terms of images, and qualitative coverage in terms of placement of stories. Each volunteer collected data on column inches, headlines, themes, images, placement of stories daily. There were three reviewers per paper, and these results were submitted by email to me every, uh, every evening. An average was obtained if the results were discrepant. If there were wide discrepancies, the fourth reviewer was involved and the differences were adjudicated. Now this is not really rocket science. For example, if you take this newspaper, you can see here, uh, these images, neither of them is smiling, so this is considered a neutral or negative image. Sumiko is smiling, but she was not a candidate. <laughs> the story on the PMP was a front page story, so this counted as a page one placement. And the number of column inches, for example, for this story was two inches times five columns, uh, ten column inches. Uh, these were some examples of positive images, nicely smiling faces of uh, candidates, and a nice family photo of uh, Nicosia. Um, the whole paper was studied, and uh, uh, including the letters page, and so we counted the number of pictures, the number of column inches, and, uh, and as well as the, the placement of the articles. So these are the results. Uh, so in terms of total cumulative coverage, okay, uh, the PAP accumulated about 4,600 column inches, NSP about 600, RP about, uh, about 200, SDA about less than 200, SDP about 500 plus, and WP close to about 900. Now if you break it up to the different newspapers, you'll see uh, the differences are pretty dramatic. Uh, again, for the ST, uh, the PAP had a very high uh, ratio, uh, and today actually gave uh, SDP and NSP uh, comparable figures to WP. Um, if you do a further analysis in terms of the daily coverage, now this is the ST daily coverage, PAP, again pretty constant all the way through, there was a dip over here on the 2nd of May, uh, WP uh, started high, uh, went down and then sort of plateaued, uh, SDP again up and down, uh, SDA pretty low all the way through, just uh, isolated stories over here. Now if you look at it in terms of the relative coverage by political parties, if you take the PAP as one, then the NSP's coverage in uh, the Straits Times was 10% of the coverage of the PAP. Uh, SDP 10%, WP about 20%. What is interesting is the NSP and the SDP had high coverage in the new paper. But as some of you know, some of those stories were not really very flattering coverage. <laughs> now, you know the, uh, um, the party political broadcasts are divided by the number of candidates. And that is actually the dominant narrative in understanding the relative uh, proportion that the mainstream media coverage is. What this effectively does is it ensures that the larger parties have a larger, louder voice. 
So if we do this and we divide the coverage by the number of candidates, you can see for the ST, uh, the PAP still has 35 column inches per candidate. Uh, SDP is second, with 26 column inches per candidate, followed by WP. But on the other hand, if you go to today, today actually gave SDP a better column inch per cover uh, candidate coverage than, than PAP. Um, and SDP came up there with today. But the new paper, again, uh, unfortunately, they seem to uh, delight in uh, going after the uh, SDP. But uh, NSP also was close to the coverage that was provided um, to the PAP per candidate. Okay? Now, moving on to images, in terms of pictures, remember I was talking about smiling candidates? Total number of smiling candidate pictures, PAP 310, NSP about 60, WP close to 100, SDP about 40, okay? and SDP about 30, SDA about 10, RP about 10 to 15. Now, if you divide it up to the newspapers, again, you can see the SDP, which seemed to be very prominent, the new paper suddenly dropped off. Okay? But they're not exactly smiling in the in those papers. Um, again, for the ST, uh, the highest proportion uh, with the PAP, but the ST, you look at this, the Workers' Party suddenly shoots up in terms of images as compared to actual coverage per se. Um, and so for the ST, it was uh, PAP followed by WP, SDP, NSP, and uh, uh, SDP. Now, in terms of, uh, if you break it down, again, using the mainstream media formula that you're allowed the coverage depending on how many candidates you can mount, this is very interesting. In terms of images, PAP drops off. Uh, and SPP, because they only had seven candidates, actually ended up with the best ratio in the Straits Times. Uh, and it's partly due to the, the nice pictures of Mr. Kiam, not necessarily <laughs> smiling, but not necessarily looking the strongest. Uh, WP also did well, and PAP is only third in terms of the uh, coverage by divided by number of candidates. Uh, in terms of today, again, SDP, PAP, and uh, uh, interestingly enough, uh, WP and SDA were almost a decade, only the RP seemed to do badly in today. And uh, the new paper, again, um, with the SDP, because they, there were so many images, there was a few of them which were indeed positive, which gave them an higher rate for them. Now, the last thing that we looked at was placement. How many pages do you need to flip through the paper before you hear the message of that particular party? No surprise, PAP appeared on average of page one uh, for Straits Times and for today, all through the campaign. Uh, for the new paper, it appeared on page three. Uh, for the NSP, the average was about 12, and uh, uh, for the Straits Times, and for none of the other papers, did they appear within the first few pages okay, um, during the duration of the campaign, on average. In terms of front page placements, uh, PAP 10 out of 10 days on the front page for both the Straits Times and today, uh, 6 out of 10 days for today, uh, for the new paper, NSP appeared on the front page 2 days in the new paper, SDP on the front page 1 day during the campaign itself, and WP twice in the uh, Straits Times. Uh, now this is the other issue, blackout days. What were the days when there was no mention of the party at all? PAP had no blackout days. <laughs> NSP, interestingly enough, had one day in which it didn't appear in the new paper, it appeared every day and today in Straits Times. The RP had eight days in which it didn't appear in the new paper, three days in which it didn't appear in today, SDA similarly, four days in which it didn't appear in today, six days in which it didn't appear in the new paper. Okay? Now, uh, I am a scientist. Okay, so I apologize, but how many of you have done advanced statistics? <laughs> okay, good, at least one or two. So what I did was I did a, a, a regression on this, and uh, it's not a directly linear regression, but it's actually a multiple linear regression. Okay, for those of you who understand English, what that means is like, for example, if you try and correlate height with basketball ability, so the taller you are, the more likely you are to be good at basketball. Okay, but it's not necessarily only due to your height. There are many other factors. It's how good you are at jumping, it's all that kind of other thing. But height is one of the characteristics that we call an independent variable, and your ability to score baskets we call a dependent variable. In my own field of infectious disease, okay, which is why I love and very talk about communicable diseases, we have experiments where you give medical students salmonella to drink. And you know that if they drink a certain amount of salmonella, they've got a certain percentage chance of getting diarrhea. And everybody, if they drink 100,000 colonies of salmonella, they will get diarrhea. Okay, but some of them have really iron stomachs. But basically what I'm trying to say is that shows that there's a relationship between one thing and another. So we looked at, we looked at the outcome. 
Okay, how many blackout days you had and how that affected your vote share? And uh, this figure is the R squared. And R squared closer to 1 is actually a highly uh, significant correlation. And what it showed is, you look at this, PAP, 60% of the vote, zero blackout days. The SDA had only 30% of the vote, and they had 13 blackout days in, uh, in total. And it does seem to fit fairly closely along the curve. If you had very few blackout days, like the WP or the NSP, you tended to do better. If you had more blackout days, like the Reform Party and the SDA, you tended to do worse. Again, the qualifier we always say is association does not equal causation. Now, if you look at positive images, PAP, highest number of positive images, highest number of votes. Workers' Party, second highest number of positive images, second highest number of votes. NSP, third highest number of positive images. This is a bit of an outlier. SPP was actually the third. Workers, uh, NSP is the fourth. Third highest number of positive, in, uh, sorry, third highest votes, but not the highest number of positive images. And again, SDA and RP uh, bringing up the rear. And the correlation is even higher here, it's 0 0.93, which is very close to 1. Now the question is, is that because we were not really using the mainstream media's uh, approach of dividing by the number of candidates? So if you divide it up by the number of candidates, it's actually a bit all over the shop. So it's not really that reliable. So finally, you look at the print media coverage in terms of the total coverage and the vote share. And what you can see is again, the correlation is pretty good, 0 0.88. SDA, RP, very little uh, coverage in the print media, very low vote share. PAP high coverage, WP second highest coverage, uh, NSP SDP. So it does seem to imply that there's some association, but not necessarily a causation there. For some limitations of the study, we only had three reviewers. Ideally, we'd like to have ten reviewers, and then we can uh, get a better, more accurate uh, data uh, assessment. There's some subjectivity in assignment. You know, the guy smiling with his mouth closed, is that a positive image or a neutral image? Uh, some difficulty in teasing out the contents when the paragraphs actually had two parties involved. Uh, we have collected data from Chinese Malay and some of the Tamil papers, but not completely analyzed them and never presented them. The bottom line is that there do appear to be discrepancies in the English language print media coverage. There's an association between more and better coverage and a higher vote share, although again, it's not causation, but there does seem to be an association there. And more detailed analysis, including a multivariable analysis, is required to show evidence of causation. So we recommend that there should be multiple organizations doing media monitoring. All media ideally should be involved, including TV, radio, Chinese Malay Panel. Content analysis of word counts should be considered, and feedback should be provided to the media in real time. Now you know, it's, everybody thinks that we're really bad, but we're definitely not as bad as some places. If you've ever watched Fox News, which is the number one channel in the United States, you see, uh, they're obsessed with Obama's birth certificate, and they even had Obama bin Laden, who was found dead. <laughs> so I don't think we're as bad as that. And uh, five years ago, we were a lot worse. I submitted something to Colin Gold uh, in May 2006, and he wrote back, he says, was told by a reliable source, we have to be a wee bit careful as people are watching the site. And I don't think this happened in this election. Um, but yesterday, in the SD forum, which is supposedly uh, they edit uh, letters for accuracy and content. We have someone writing in that uh, a mature electorate would not certainly untruths on the internet but the government spends only 1.4% of the GDP on health. But of course, this fact, the government spending 1.4% of GDP on health comes from the Ministry of Health website. <laughs> and finally, okay, you all know what that was yesterday. This is today. And the Minister Mentor says, our main reason is to show that Singapore is in a new era. It cannot be government, it's a beautiful. Unlike Chariot, I'm an optimist. Thank you. <laughs>